QuickBooks Online 2022 Bank Rules Split Into Two Accounts Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our bank feed practice file we set up with a 30 day free trial holding down control scrolling up a bit to get to the one two five percent currently in the home page otherwise known as the get things done page the business view as compared to the accountant view switching to the accountant view is something you can do by going to the cog up top switch to the accountant view down below we will be toggling back and forth between the two views either here or by jumping to the sample company file currently in the accountant view Back on over to the bank feed practice file, open it up a few tabs to put reports in, right click in the tab up top to do so, duplicating it. Back to the tab to the left, right clicking again and duplicating again. As those are thinking, jump on over to the business view, or this is the accountant view in the sample company file to see where the reports are at, which are on the low left hand side in reports. Back on over to the business view, bank feed practice file. It's still thinking, but that's okay. We're going to go into the business overview on the left-hand side. We're going to go into the reports on the left-hand side. Close up the hamburger. We're going to pick one of those reports. I think we're going to do this time. Let's pick the balance sheet. Let's look at the balance sheet. That's what we'll take a look at. And it's going to go from 01, 01, 21, 12, 31, 21, and run tab to the right and we're going to go into the business overview reports this time let's take a look at the profit and loss you always pick that one i know it's a good i like that report it's one of the major financial statements 010121 to 123121 and then we're going to run that one Going back then to the first tab, back to the first tab, we're going to go into the uh, business overview. I'm sorry, into the banking information because we're looking at the bank feed stuff now. And then we're in the transactions up top and the banking tab. If we were in the accountant view, by the way, it would be under the banking, banking tab. Tab, tab, tab to the left, tab to the top, banking, banking, double tab, banking, tab. Back to the bank feed practice file, closing the hamburger. We're looking at the checking account. And now we want to think about a transaction that we possibly want to split between multiple different things. I'm going to be working with these ones, which we saw last time, which have a rule applied to them already. So I'm going to, I'm going to disable the rule. I'm going to disable, I'm going to break that rule. So I'm going to go into the rules. One, one, where, where the rules are at at this point is if I open up the hamburger here, then uh, we've got the rules, which are going to be right here. So I'm going to go into the rules, going into the rules, and I'm going to break those rules. That's what rules are for, right? These last two, I'm going to break those. So I could go into the drop down here. I can delete them or I'll just disable them. I'm going to hamstring the rules. I'm just going to disable them. But I can put, I can put the hamstring back on. So it's not like don't feel bad for the rule. But I'm going to disable it here. And then... This one's going to be disabled too. Two rules disabled. If I wanted to re-able it, put the hamstring back together, then I can, of course, hit the drop down and enable. But right now it's disabled, so I can do something new. We're going to the hamburger up top again. And let's go back into the bookkeeping side of things. Transactions up top. And close in the hamburg back out. Now I can work with these without messing it up so I'm gonna go in and say let's say that we have these types of accounts and we want to split them out and this is this could be common if you're trying to allocate to say different locations or different departments certain expenses this could be something that if you're in a not-for-profit organization and you're trying to allocate uh, your expenses out that you're trying to use some kind of percentages to allocate the expenses you could also have the same thing on the revenue side we would need to split the items so let's hit this one right here and say okay let's let's say we were going to split between and let's use our class tracking again in order to do our, our splitting between two accounts so returned on the class tracking in a prior presentation but just for a recap if i right click the tab up top and duplicate the tab and then i'm going to show you where the class tracking thing is so you could turn that on if you don't have it on before you should have it on because you should be following us closely with everything we do and in the past we did this before so but in any case in case you're not following as closely as you should be then we're going to get into the account and settings on the left hand side 
We're going to go into the advanced area on the left hand side and then you're going to find the class tracking which is right here which we have turned on. Turning it on, closing this back out, going back to the first tab and so I'm going to record this transaction as if like it's an expense, let's say it's a supplies type of expense or something like that that I want to apply to two different, two different classes. So I'm going to hit the category item here so it will be an expense type of form which it would normally be we're going to be putting it into i'll call it american express let's just do american this time just to make it different because i already have that other vendor in there or or uh, yeah vendor save it all right the category now i could i could add this by having uh, different categories i'm going to say different locations for example or I can basically have the classes be the only thing that's going to be the distinguishing factor. Now, because I'm going to try to do different categories, I'm going to add another account here. So to do that, I'm going to go to the business, to the accountant view. And I'll have to do this again, but I'm going to hit the drop down, switch to the accountant view because the business view drives me crazy with the category adding. And if I've told into it once, I've told them a, a hundred million times that I don't want you to drive me to crazy. I don't want you to drive me to crazy. I'm getting out of the car. And then I'm gonna go down and say that now we're going back into the American Express. I'm gonna go to categorize it again. And we're gonna say this is just, we'll call it American. And now I'm gonna add an account in a format that QuickBooks doesn't try to drive me to the crazy. So then we're gonna hit the drop down. Let's make it an expense type of account. So let's make it an expense type of account. And then I'm going to make it in other, some kind of expense type of account. So let's say it's going to be then, let's call it just legal and professional possibly. But the point is I'm going to put at the end of it uh, L1. I'm going to indicate that it's going to be location one. We can also indicate the location by having a parent account possibly called legal and professional and then have two accounts below it which would be legal and professional l1 l2 for example with the sub accounts uh, so these are a couple different ways you might do it we'll also assign it out with a class so i'm going to save it and close it save it and close it uh, obviously i kind of made this up because we're working with Ameri american express but we're imagining it's legal that we're going to now assign out to the class field which is now apparent and present given the fact that we turned on the class tracking we can then say, I'm going to assign that to L1. So we want it to going to be assigned to L1, but we want to have multiple categories that are going to be impacted, not having the whole thing applied just to the one account, because I'd like to apply some of it to L1 possibly and L2. So we need to turn on the split category, the split. For this, I'm going to set up a rule down below. I'm going to go down to the rule down below. I'm going to create a rule. And then I'll call it just, this is going to be the rule, money out rule. It's going to be, uh, I'm going to assign it just to the checking account, but I could assign it to all of the bank feed accounts. The condition is basically going to be the same here. So I could say all or any, the one condition description contains the American Express in it. So I'm going to keep that one there. It's going to be an expense type of form, which is basically a check type of form without the check number. That's going to be the, the form that will be used. The category that it's going to be going to, this is where I want to assign the split. So I would like to take this same amount and put it to two different accounts. So I'm going to hit the split button and then we've got the split percentage split versus the amount split. So I can have a percentage uh, kind of split, which is common to be able to say whatever the amount that comes through is. I want you to take some percentage of it and apply it to one versus the other, or you can have a fixed dollar amount that's going to be split. I think the percent would be quite common, especially if you're doing something where you're trying to say, this is my, this is the normal transaction that comes through. And I'm trying to allocate some percentage to basically location one or location two or something like that. So let's say we got a percent, let's say it's going to be a 40, 60 breakout. So I'm going to say this is going to be the 40%, 40% breakout. 40 let's do I need a percent side 40 percent and then we've got the category which is going to go to that expense account the class is going to be L1 and then down here I'm going to put the 60 percent which is going to go to the second location which I could indicate with just the L2 in the class breaking it out by separate classes and or I can make a separate account for it as well so I'm going to add another account here and I'm going to say new account 
what I call it, I called it legal and professional. So it's going to be an expense type of account. It's going to be legal and professional they wanted, I want here. But I'm going to change the name and, oh, hold on a second. Legal and professional. I got to type it in now. Legal and professional fees L2. Again, we could have just one legal and professional and then two subsidiary accounts breaking out by location, L1, L2, for example. Or you could just use the class tracking to break it out. Those are some options you might use to try to add some more detail to your financials if you, if you so choose. So I'm gonna say save it and close it. I'm gonna add it to the class of L2. So now every time it picks up this expense account, it's gonna be breaking it out on a 60-40 basis between you know based on this rule which is kind of pretty neat pretty nice and could be quite useful depending on the circumstances so then uh, that's going to be how we want to break it out let's go ahead and save it and close it and so there we have it so this this rule has then been applied let's go ahead and i can look at the rule now let's go to the the rule tab over here and just check out what has happened with the rule if i wanted to change the rule i could it's down here so i can edit the rule and just check it out on this side so it's breaking it out 60 40 there it is looks good let's close that back out and let's go back then to the first tab and let's add one of them let's add one and see what happens add it and see what happens why don't you okay i will so we're going to add it and then let's go up to the to the balance sheet which isn't going to be too unusual, but we'll check it out anyways. So let's hold the control scroll up. Let's go into the checking account and see if I can filter, filter it to find this one easily customizing. I'm going to filter it filter, please. There's too much stuff going on here. And why I figure like this should be in an alphabetical order, but it's not all the time. I want that one. That's the one run it. And so there it is, and it's an expense type of form. Now, if I go into the form, it's not gonna take me back to the bank feeds or the rules or anything. It's gonna take me to an expense form, which is in essence like a check form without the check number. And so there it is, and you got to split the two categories on down below that it applied it out to, as well as the classes that it applied it out to. So what did this do? It decreased the checking account by the full amount of the three two five nine ninety four and then it's split out between the two expense accounts and locations uh here as accordance with the rule closing it out let's check that out the more interesting part going back up top and back to the balance sheet back to the tab to the right or tab to the right and then if i run this here's my standard income statement where now I've got the legal and the professional down here broken out by the two different locations but what if i want to see the class tracking let's open up another report breaking it out by class right clicking duplicating this tab so we can open up another report broken out by class broken out by classes i'm going to go into the reports on the left hand side and then we're going to go into closing the hamburger and we're going to go down to the business stuff and let's make a p and l profit and loss by class Por favor, please. Range change from 010121 123121. Run it. And so there we've got our information. If I scroll on down, we got the class tracking now. Two classes that have been tracked. So I can see now that there's just a couple ways that you might apply this kind of thing out. If you're going to use this kind of splitting option, then it's it's likely that you might be doing it with class tracking because you might be tracking it and trying to put it in by location for example you could also apply this kind of thing if you had a small business and you're trying to apply out your business versus your your non-business and you're coming you have transactions out of the same checking account and you're trying to say for example the utility bill i'm going to apply you know 60 percent to business and or whatever and and uh, the the rest to 40 percent to the uh, personal or something like that so you, you could apply this kind of rule out in those instances which can be quite nice uh, and but often it will be done in conjunction with this class tracking but you could break it out by basically have different accounts which assign the different categorization or possibly 
with a parent account and these breaking out the subsidiary accounts. The reason the classes are quite nice and, and the location items is because you can get basically a net income number by location or by business versus professional, uh, business versus personal or something like that. Although that does mean that you're gonna, you would have to then uh, every time you enter a transaction, assign a class to it, which isn't too bad. We got some information on that if you wanted to look in that in more detail, but that's how you can apply the split and the rule to do that a bit more efficiently and get a little bit more detail as you do.